This is a video to show you how to use hand calcs with JupyterLab to render mathematical calculations quickly and then print them to PDF. If you've been using Excel to do this up to this point, I'm excited to show you how to use hand calcs. The easiest way to start is to download the Python distribution known as Anaconda. Go to anaconda.com, click Product, Individual Edition, scroll down to the bottom and you will see an installer download links for all systems. Download the installer and follow the prompts. The Anaconda Python distribution is preloaded with the most used engineering and data science libraries, including JupyterLab, which is where we run hand calcs. Once your installation is complete, open up a terminal window. On Windows, Anaconda has installed Anaconda Prompt in your start menu, so just open that. Type pip install hand calcs. Pip is the most common way of installing Python packages from the central Python packaging index also known as PyPI, available on the web at pypi.org. Next, type Jupyter Lab to launch the Jupyter application. This is a locally running web application that will open in your web browser. Jupyter Lab is a Python coding environment that offers more than just code. It combines cells of pre-formatted text, multimedia, and Python code to create a live, interactive document. On the left is my file browser. I'm going to start a new notebook. The notebook will be placed in my current directory in the file browser. Right click the tab to rename the file. A notebook consists of a collection of cells. There are three kinds of cells, but the default cell is a Python code cell. You can run any Python code in a cell and run it by either pressing the play button at the top or more commonly by pressing shift enter. In Python, you set variables with the equal sign. Here, I will create variables a and b. After running this cell, the variables a and b will have the values of 3 and 5, respectively. To see the values of these variables, just type them into a new cell and hit Shift-Enter to run. The output of the cell will be shown. Click outside of the cell and type dd to delete a cell. Arithmetic in Python is simple and intuitive. Addition is with the plus sign, subtraction with a dash, multiplication with an asterisk, division with a forward slash. However, exponentiation, raising a to the power of b, is done with two asterisks. This is because the caret symbol is assigned to a different operation in Python, known as bitwise exclusive or. This is an operation on binary numbers and not what we want. To raise a to the power of b, use two asterisks. This cell, c equals a plus b did not generate an output because the output for the operation was assigned to the variable c. To show the value of c, just run a cell with c in it. Let's assume a and b are the sides of a right triangle, and we want the hypotenuse length. Writing the Pythagorean equation can be done like this, raising everything in the brackets to the power of one half. Running this cell will just assign the result to the variable c. To return the result, ensure to have c be the last line of the cell. The power can be written as a fraction or as a decimal. These are the same. There are three kinds of cells in Jupyter. I have been using Python code cells, but there are also raw and markdown cells. Notice when switching from a code cell to a raw or markdown cell, the square brackets beside the cell disappear. Markdown is a form of shorthand for quickly formatting text as HTML code. In a markdown cell, a pound sign is used to indicate a heading. One pound sign corresponds to an H1 tag in HTML to indicate a top level heading. In Markdown, use two pounds for a second level, three pounds for a third level heading, and so on. Using Markdown cells is a fast and easy way to structure your notebook as a document. To make text bold, surround it with two asterisks. To make text italic, surround it with one asterisk. To type just regular text, just type it. It's important to note that the pound sign in a markdown cell is different than the pound sign in a Python cell, where a pound sign in Python just indicates a comment. Now that we have covered the basics of a Jupyter notebook, let's start using hand calcs to render the math in a code cell. To start using hand calcs, import it. In a code cell, type import handcalcs.render. This loads the hand calcs code into memory. To use hand calcs, type Percent percent render at the top of a cell and then any calculation. Hit shift enter to run the cell and render the math. Percent percent render is not Python code per se. It is a special kind of behavior that only works in Jupyter Notebook and is known as a cell magic. Hand calcs reads the code in your cell, 
runs it, and then displays it as a LaTeX representation, first showing the symbolic formula, then the numeric substitution, and then the result. Here, I am writing the Pythagorean formula with the hypotenuse again, and this is how it is going to be rendered. However, Python comes with a math module with many basic math functions. I will import math and then run the function help math to see what's inside the math module. I can see that there are functions such as sine, cos, tan, conversion to radians, and also square root. I will import the square root, sine, and tan functions. Using the square root functions with hand calcs now renders a square root sign. In a new cell, I will assign values to four variables. Not much math is rendered, but all of the variable assignments take up a lot of vertical space. HandCalc has four comment tags that alter the behavior of the rendering. A comment tag is a particular Python comment on the first line after the percent percent render. The first comment tag is parameters. By commenting parameters at the top of the cell, the resulting values of all variables in the cell are shown in a three column format. This is useful for saving on vertical space. HandCalc renders function names as shown here in the case with sign. All division is represented as a fraction, as seen with A over B. Variable names with subscripts are created by using underscores. Subscripts can be any length and can be nested as sub-subscripts by using additional underscores. HandCalc will render any code symbolically, followed by the numeric substitution and then the result. However, if you don't want to see all of the steps for a given calculation, enclose the entire calculation in parentheses, like I have done here with alpha. Variable names that are declared with the names of Greek lettered are rendered as their corresponding character. Use lowercase variable names for lowercase and a capitalized first letter for an uppercase Greek letter. If a comment is on the first line of the cell after the render, then it will be evaluated as a comment tag. If a comment is beside a calculation, then it will be rendered as a parenthetical comment to the rendered calculation. Here, I use the three other comment tags. The first is parameters. The second is called long. It is intended to be used if the calculation you are rendering is too long to fit on one line of the page. By using long, the calculation is broken up over three lines. HandCalcs makes an attempt to predict if a calculation needs to be broken up onto multiple lines, but sometimes its prediction is wrong and it breaks up a calculation unnecessarily. To render all calculations in the cell on one line as though they were all short calculations, then use the short comment tag. The last comment tag is called symbolic. This will omit both the numeric substitution and the result and show the calculation symbolically only. The results can be shown in the following cell like this. Now that I have covered the basics of JupyterLab and HandCalcs, Let's print our notebook to PDF. There are two different options for doing this. I will demonstrate the easiest, which is to export to HTML and to print to PDF from my browser. Printing to PDF directly via a LaTeX compiler is also an option, but requires a separate LaTeX installation, which is simple, but beyond the scope of this basic video. My HTML export includes all of the notebook content, both my input and output cells. Because the idea of hand calcs is to render all information that can be used to recreate a calculation, you may find it unnecessary to have the input code cells appear with your output cells. Hand calcs comes with an alternate HTML export template that can be used with JupyterLab. To start, type from handcalcs.install underscore templates import install underscore HTML. This will import the install HTML function. Call help on this function to learn more about it. You can call help on any Python function before using it to learn more about how it works. From the documentation, I can see I can call the function with no arguments to see all of the available templates. Currently, there is only one template. Copy the template name and use it as an argument in the function to install that template. Once you've installed the new template, you will not need to do this again unless you want to uninstall it in the future. This template change will be in place whenever you use JupyterLab again in the future. Use the install HTML function to uninstall the template also. Find out how by calling help on it again. Now I will export the notebook to HTML again, and you'll see that only the output cells and the rendered math output is shown. This gives a much nicer PDF. These are the basics of how to use hand calcs on JupyterLab and how to use it to quickly print rendered calculations in PDF.
To see hand calcs in a more real world application, see my video where I compare creating a calculation sheet in hand calcs and Excel simultaneously. For more information about hand calcs, please see the documentation at the GitHub repository. Links are in the video details below.